At one point in time, Optic Skittle Cakes was without a doubt amongst the most hated people in the Apex Legends community. When his name was brought up, not a single person had anything good to say about him even though he was one of the most consistent high ranking Apex Predators on console back in the early days of the game. In fact, his reputation within the Apex Legends community was so bad that during his time on Xbox, the name Skittle Cakes was a familiar name no matter what platform you were on. Some knew him as a teamer, some believed that he used a strike pack while others believed that there were multiple people using his xbox account since it seemed like he was queuing into ranked matches 24 hours a day seven days a week and if we take a quick look back at one of the most notorious ranked seasons on console season four you would notice that skittle cakes was a huge piece in the war between two of the biggest friend groups on the xbox platform a war that basically destroyed what it meant to be an xbox rank grinder and ruined the reputation of not just skittle cakes but everyone that was involved in that situation. But what makes Skittle Cakes interesting is not the fact that he was a notorious cheater or a person that had an insanely high ego despite the evidence people had against him. It is the fact that he is one of the very few people that were able to experience both sides of the coin when it comes to having a good and bad reputation on social media. At one point, he was amongst the most hated people on Apex Legends and now he's amongst the most successful esports professionals on on Apex Legends of all time. The same individuals that despised him for cheating in ranked are now praising him for his insanely high skill and his ability to compete against the best of the best. Skittle Cake's reputation was at one point being held by a stream and when most people would have given up and disappeared due to the immense amount of pressure they were facing, Skittle Cakes took the route that many people wouldn't have the balls to go through. The route that would guarantee you constant shame and embarrassment until Skittle Cakes, the last one alive, can he do it? Some more shots going down, he's gonna oh get the KB for his team, this. and it wouldn't be too scenario. Is he gonna get the armor stop? Oh he does, God. and is he gonna win it for his team? Can he do it? The armor stop coming out from Skittles, and it's gonna be a one oh, oh my God! God. He somehow proved to the masses that they were wrong and you were right. But if you really want to understand the Skittle Cake story, we would have to dig a bit deeper than that to truly understand how and why Skittle Cakes was even able to be given the opportunity to redeem his reputation. We need to jump way back to the OG days of Apex Legends, back when the R99 and Longbow was the meta, back when people were melting glitching in Skulltown because they were too afraid of getting third party, back when it actually meant something to be an Apex Predator so people were willing to do absolutely anything to ensure that they would hit that rank before the season ends. Let's take a quick look back at a time when ranked was still in its early days. To some people, this was the golden days of Apex Legends, back when you could hop on the game and grind for hours upon hours and actually have fun because Apex Legends was still somewhat of a new game with unlimited potential. But just like every new game, if you were to dig deep enough, you would find certain bugs and glitches that just completely ruined the game for everyone. For Apex Legends, that glitch was called the Disconnect Glitch, a glitch that gave players the ability to not lose rank points even after they had already died. The Gateway Glitch that laid the foundations for what would ruin ranked in the upcoming seasons. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet because you see, to the average player, the Disconnect Glitch wasn't that big of a deal because the player would perform the glitch after they have already died, so that meant that it wouldn't and sabotage other players ability to gain RP and since there wasn't a cap to how many people could reach Apex Predator at that time, all in all, it wasn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. But on the other hand, to the leaderboard grinders and streamers that dedicated their entire lives to playing ranked, the disconnect glitch disrupted the leaderboard grind and laid the foundations for what would destroy the merit of owning the earliest rank badge on console. The disconnect glitch gave rank grinders the ability to consistently gain more RP throughout the day, pretty much meaning that the highest ranks on the leaderboard was not determined by how good you were at the game, it was determined by how long you were willing to queue into matches every single day, because if you had mastered the disconnect glitch, you would only be gaining RP, which would result in your leaderboard placements to keep going up until you eventually hit Apex Predator, and if you had no life, number one Apex Predator was most definitely achievable. 
cool. Now the problem here was that every high ranked console player knew about this glitch already. It wasn't a hidden secret that only a select few knew about. Everyone from Platinums to Apex Predators were using this glitch on a daily basis. So that caused the ranked leaderboard to go from who was the best at the game to a competition to see who was the best at using the disconnect glitch. Now for series 1 ranked, the disconnect glitch wasn't as disruptive as you might think because you still somewhat had to play the game in order to gain RP. But the real damage this glitch caused was not the RP players gained by using this glitch, it was the certain mindset players obtained after this season that would truly destroy ranked and everything it stood for. People realized that if you wanted to reach number 1 apex predator or top 100 for that matter, you had to be willing to utilize every little thing in your disposal because if you were not willing to do that, your competition most definitely will. And this had to be the absolute worst timing because in series 2 of ranked, the most disruptive glitch in apex history had been discovered by the same people that were abusing the disconnect glitch, a notorious glitch by the name of dashboarding. And unlike the disconnect glitch, dashboarding was guaranteed to work every single time. We all remember dashboarding, that glitch that gave players the ability to leave the game without losing any RP while you were shooting at them. One second you're chasing a person that is 1 HP through a building, then the next second they turn into a death box and you gain no RP from that interaction. Dashboarding completely destroyed ranked. And in season 3, the Apex Predator ranked peaked at over 30,000 plus Apex Predators before they had to do a massive ban wave at the end of the season. Now I won't get too deep in that glitch since it is common knowledge at this point but what was really interesting about this specific season was the number one apex predator at that time that went by the name of Nita Soda. During the majority of season 3, a person by the name of Zednim was the number one apex predator. He streamed over 10 plus hours every single day to maintain his status as the number one apex predator but that wasn't until a person by the name of Nita Soda speed ran his way to number one apex predator in an extremely suspicious pace. Now at the time, Nita Soda had basically no social media presence at all. No Twitter, no YouTube, no Twitch, no nothing. But to the already existing Xbox ranked community, Nita Soda was a well known person that was notorious for using every single glitch he could get his hands on. And as you might have expected, dashboarding was one of those glitches that he was known for using. And this time, there was more than enough proof to back that statement. Now, I want you guys to keep the name Nita Soda in the back of your head throughout the remainder of this video because Nita Nita Soda is a crucial factor in understanding the full reasoning behind why Skittle Cakes was a cheater in the first place. We really need to understand the significance Nita Soda had over not just Skittle Cakes, but the entire Xbox ranked community back in the early days of Apex Legends. Now, in order to understand that, let's fast forward to Season 4 of Apex Legends. In Season 4, the dashboarding glitch was finally patched, and that caused a huge shift in how people were playing ranked. People went from being confident and running into fights because they knew that if things went bad they could resort to dashboarding to playing extremely passive and only coming out to third party because now ranked was about skill and not about using glitches. But if you thought that just because there was not an OP glitch people could abuse in season 4 people would stop cheating you would be miserably wrong because if you remember what I said a couple minutes ago both the disconnect and dashboarding glitch instilled a certain mindset in the players that caused them to desperately rely on cheating in order to reach higher ranks. Cheating was like a drug to the console community and the disconnect glitch got them addicted to it. But when dashboarding was discovered due to how easy and accessible the glitch was, not only did the ranked community fall victim to the glitch, this time every single person on the game was using the glitch on a daily basis. So when dashboarding got patched at the end of season 3, instead of trying to figure out how to get better at the game, people were trying to figure out another way to cheat the system. And this leads us to arguably the most important part of the Skittle Cake story, the season 4 console war. And this is when we are finally introduced to one of Skittle Cake's former closest friends that went by the name of Zenoa. To some people watching this video, Zenoa is a name that you probably heard more often than the names Skittle Cakes and Nita Soda back in the day. He was a streamer on Xbox back in the early days of Apex Legends, but most importantly, he had the goal to reach number one Apex Predator in season four. Now, the reason why this was so important was because Nita Soda and his entire friend group despised both Zenoa and 
Skittle Cakes. They absolutely hated them. And Nita sold his friend that went by the names Trip Capilla and Dusty Schmidt, but is also widely known as Invulnerable, was the number three apex predator at that same time. So they wanted to boost Invulnerable from number three apex predator to number one apex predator as a way of saying a few to both Sanoa and Skittle Cakes. You see, to them, number one apex predator was more of a way to claim superiority over other console rank grinders than it was of an achievement to show their fans or even esports organizations that they would want to represent in the future. Being number one apex predator was the ultimate FU to other Xbox leaderboard grinders. In any argument, no matter what the context was, if you were to say that I was the number one apex predator and you were lower than me despite you playing the same amount of hours as me, there was basically no comeback to that statement. So when Zenoa became the number one apex predator and Skittle Cakes became the number two apex predator in season four, Nita Soda and his friend group felt like they had no choice but to try everything they can to surpass them. And this is the exact moment when the season four console war had started. Early on, Nita Soda and his friend group realized that Zenoa and Skittle Cakes were queuing into matches for unthinkable hours every single day. So in order to catch up in RP, they would need to consistently win every single match to queue into if they even wanted a chance to make it to number one or number two Apex Predator by the end of the season. Now at this time, it was unknown if Zenoa and Skittle Cakes were already cheating before this happened. But according to the evidence we have today, Nita Soda and his friend group would be the ones to start cheating first since they wanted to be the ones to surpass both Zenoa and Skittle Cakes. And as most of you guys already know, the cheating method they used to win every single match was the oldest method in the book of gaming, teaming. They would all queue into matches at the same exact time to farm as much kills as they could as a unit. Then at the end of the game, when it's just them alive, they would let Invulnerable's team win the game, causing him to earn maximum ranked points basically every single game. And as you notice from this clip you are watching, they didn't give zero Fs if anyone was spectating. That's why there's countless pieces of evidence showing them teaming in ranked. All they cared about was making sure that Invulnerable was the number one Apex Predator before the season ended. That was their ultimate goal. Now because they were teaming, they were noticeably gaining more RP per day, but not enough to surpass Sanoa as the number one Apex Predator since he had the advantage of playing way more hours per day than them. And luckily for Sanoa, he realized early on that something suspicious had been going on in Nita Soda's friend group since they had been gaining suspicious amounts of RP at an alarming rate. And surprisingly, it didn't take Sanoa long to figure out what had been happening after he would get tipped off by an anonymous person live on his stream. I have actual photo proof from text messages between people, but look at this shit. We're nine manning to kill Zenoa to get drip number one, and Zenoa's a bitch, bro. People are literally fucking out to get Y S F. You see that name? That's one of the people you guys will see in the in the kill feed. Shit's crazy. They sent out tweets on the last day of the season, and they're like, "It's a war. Everyone stop Zenoa from getting number one. Like, come ruin him." Zenoa had to do something as soon as possible since they were bound to surpass him as the number one apex predator anytime soon. And I can't emphasize this point enough, the sheer pettiness in the Xbox community completely distorted their perception on what ranked really was. They didn't give a shit about morals or the fact that they were getting exposed all over Reddit. All they cared about was making sure that their friend group was number one at the end of the season. And this is the exact moment when both Zenoa and Skittle Cakes made the decision that would be the first a stepping stone in ruining their reputation. They would start teaming in order to combat teaming. And unfortunately for them, almost instantly, proof that both Zenoa and Skittle Cakes were teaming would go viral on Reddit. But just like Nita Soda and his friend group, Zenoa and Skittle Cakes did not care if anyone was spectating and recording them teaming in ranked. There was one week left in season four and Nita Soda and his friend group were trying everything they can to surpass them as the number one and number two Apex Predators. So according to 
to Skittle Cakes and Zenoa. They didn't believe that they were real cheaters. They believed that they were simply trying to maintain their ranks since actual cheaters were trying to surpass them. But obviously that's a pretty stupid excuse for teaming in ranked and as expected that wouldn't stop big blogs from stating that they were blatant cheaters. Dexerto would post a blog reporting on the teaming situation that had been destroying console ranked and in this blog they didn't really do a deep dive into what was happening in the console community they would just mainly report on the viral clips showing Zeno and Skittle Cakes teaming as well as Nita Soda and his friend group but what really made this article worth mentioning was the fact that this specific article would be the final nail in the coffin destroying Sonoa, Skittle Cakes and Nita Soda's reputation on a greater scale now that it wasn't just the console community that knew about them and this is when it really started to get interesting. A respawn developer by the name of Chin would reply to a tweet alerting him about the article made by Dick Serto, and Chin replied saying that they will be taking appropriate action after doing investigations, pretty much implying that everyone involved in the season 4 console war was going to get banned anytime soon. Now after that statement from Chin, word was going around the community that it was only a matter of time before Zenoa, Skittle Cakes, Nita Soda, and everyone involved in the console war were going to get banned. And after hearing this, many people involved in that situation would start to make the switch to PC. But for one person involved in the season 4 console war, this news was devastating. That person was Zenoa. You see, Zenoa put in the most hours to maintain his status as the number one Apex Predator and now that he was going to get banned, he realized that it was all for nothing. And it was clear as day that this realization started getting to his head. He realized that his reputation was already completely ruined and it couldn't have gotten any worse for him at that point. So to say that he started acting less professional would be a huge understatement because if the names know what's familiar to you in any way shape or form, you would know that it was at this specific moment that he would completely ruin his career in a way that is worse than being a known cheater. He would become racist. He would start messaging people racist things after matches, something he wasn't known to do back in his prime. Then he would start saying racist things live on his streams. Then he would start hate rating streamers and all in all he was pretty much reaching a point where he was ready to give up being a professional gamer and live streamer and due to skittle kicks being his closest friend that would literally play with him every single day of the week a lot of the hate that was meant to be sent towards noah for being racist was now being sent towards skittle cakes because he was still trying to make something of his career while still being associated with Zenoa. and from what it seemed being associated with a known racist destroyed Skittle Kick's reputation far more than cheating in Xbox ranked ever has. Now the popular advice that could have been given to Skittle Cakes on how he could possibly redeem his reputation at that time would be by disassociating with Zenoa. But the question was, would he be smart and take that advice? Surprisingly, the answer was no. Instead of disassociating with Zenoa, he for some reason chose to do the exact opposite. He switched to PC and started competing in Pro League with, you guessed it, Zenoa alongside a new friend that they made on PC that went by the name of Protectful and the three would form a pro league team called Faded or F8 for short and they would test their luck in the esports arena pro league and this is when TSM of all people would play a role in ruining Skittle Kick's reputation even more. When Team Faded started competing in esports arena tournaments they wanted to go into the scene strong so when they had the ability to compete in tournaments with the biggest esports roster they chose to get into fights with the biggest esports team on Apex Legends, which was TSM. At the time, it was common knowledge that Fragment East was TSM's drop spot for every single tournament. And for some odd reason, Team Faded made the decision to use a pretty weird strategy for their Pro League debut. They chose to land at the same exact spot as TSM, Fragment East. And almost instantly, TSM Imperial House fanbase crucified Team Faded for making this decision. They felt as if they had only dropped in Fragment East to grief TSM in order to gain clout because they were guaranteed to fight TSM in every single match. And since Imperial Hell usually had the entire NA player base watching him compete in tournaments, Skittle Cakes, Zenoa, and Protectful would be able to make a name for themselves using this one strategy, which is why TSM's fan base 
Ace became furious with Team Faded. They wanted to watch TSM compete in a fair pro league match, not a competition to see who gets the better loot in Fragment East, then ends up getting griefed within the first 10 minutes of the match. But Team Faded's plans to build a name in the competitive Apex world basically went to shit when people started to bring up Sino and Skittle Cakes past. And since the majority of the PC player base already had a reason to hate them, when they found out that they were cheaters and Sinoa was a known racist, Team Fade's time as a pro league roster had basically come to an end when the staff for Esports Arena would become aware of Skittle Cakes and Sinoa's past. And due to how bad it looked, Team Faded would be removed from Esports Arena's pro league permanently. And this is when Skittle Cakes had realized that being associated with Sinoa had been holding him back for too long. And from this moment forward, Skittle Cakes would never publicly associate himself with Sinoa ever again. But you guys might be wondering, why was Skittle Cakes given the opportunity to redeem his reputation even though everyone around him had been blacklisted from the Apex Legends community? And honestly, this is where it gets a little controversial. People believe that Skittle Cakes past as a cheater really didn't matter anymore since he had already paid the price of being banned on Xbox. And from what it seemed, he wasn't a cheater anymore. In fact, it was the opposite. Skittle Cakes switched to mouse and keyboard and his skill level had been better than ever. He would livestream all the time and his high skill level was clear as day and big names from the PC community noticed this from his time competing in Esports Arena's Pro League under Team Faded. The only thing that was holding him back was his close ties with his best friend Sanoa. And now that he got rid of Sanoa, people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and allow him to prove his skill at a higher level. But in the back of people's minds, he wasn't fully off the leash just yet since many people still publicly believe that he was a cheater and that he shouldn't be a part of the Apex Legends community. But like I said at the beginning of this video, Skittle Cakes took the route that many people would have the balls to go through because even though he was being shamed every single day for his past, he would still compete through that in order to prove himself to the masses. And once he got the news that he was allowed to compete in Esports Arena once again, he would take this as his last and final chance to prove himself to the tens of thousands of people that despised him. And this time, he would do whatever it takes to accomplish his dreams on becoming a professional Apex Legends player. And on June 1st of 2021, he would finally find the squad that he could compete at the highest level with. He would join Team Dudes Night Out, which consisted of the now legendary trio Duplex, Verholst, and Skittle Cakes. And over the course of a couple months, they would dominate in lower tier tournaments under Team Intel. And in October of 2021, Skittle Cakes, alongside Verholst and Duplex would all make the biggest step in their esports gaming careers up to that point. They would represent esports arena in official ALGS tournaments. At this point, Skittle Cakes proved that he belonged in the Apex Legends competitive community. He consistently dominated in tournaments and was without a doubt becoming one of the best upcoming professional players in the Apex scene. But just like always, people still truly believed that he shouldn't be a part of the community because of his past. But once again, Skittle Cakes did not let any of that get to him and he focused on the one thing that mattered, becoming one of the most successful pros on Apex Legends. Fast forward to December 1st of 2021, after lots of speculation, Verhulst would leave Team Esports Arena in order to represent TSM. And at this point, people felt that Verhulst leaving Esports Arena would be a bad thing for Esports Arena since he was the IGL. But honestly, Verhulst leaving Esports Arena did the opposite because when they replaced Verhulst with arguably the most slept on professional player of that time, Noct, they instantly started doing better in tournaments. And if we fast forward to April, April 28th of 2022, before the ALGS LAN tournament, Skittle Cakes alongside Noct and Duplex would represent Optic Gaming. And at this point, Skittle Cakes had defied everything through all of the hate and getting banned from not just Xbox, Apex Legends, but Esports Arena's Pro League. Skittle Cakes was able to grind through all of that and reach a point very few people would ever reach in their gaming careers. He finally made it and proved everyone wrong. And in ALGS 2022 split two playoffs, Optic Gaming would place 4th, earning Skittle Cakes $80,000. And for the ALGS playoffs, Optic Gaming would place 16th, earning him an additional $18,000, making him a part of the top 25 highest earning Apex Legends professional players of all time and solidifying his name in the history books of the Apex Legends esports. 